Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on another happy hour hangout. And uh, I'm so excited to be joining you all today on this Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna, I'm really excited about what we're gonna be playing today. So I've got Yakmanda in the house. Hello. Uh, a few more folks I know are gonna be jumping on here in just a minute. So while we're doing everything, hi, Gus or not, we've uh, got a fun one for you today. I mean, all the games I hope that I've been playing through with you all have been fun. Um, this is another fun one for sure. We are going to be playing Welcome to Dino World. It's a roll and write from Alley Cat Games. Uh, I got this game last year at Gen Con. Um, and I got one of the designers to sign my box. So it is, seems really cool to uh, have a little personal touch there. Um, let me know how the audio is sounding, making sure that everything sounds okay. I'm gonna check my audio settings here. Looks like everything's coming through all right. Seeing how everyone can hear me on the other side, uh, video filters and things too. Like I said, I'm a fairly new Twitcher I think that's the uh, the acronym, I don't know, the nickname for us, Twitcher. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, everything looks like it sounds good. Everyone is sounding good, very cool. So yeah, I got to uh, meet the designer, uh, one of the designers, uh, James O'Connor. And if you can see, he signed his name with, it actually spells out his name, but it's in the shape of a dinosaur. And there's a little person running away. I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> so yeah, this is a roll and write game. Um, but if you do not have the um, player sheet, you can play along still by drawing a grid that is nine squares across and eight squares high. So uh, let's see, there's making sure my, looks like my video kind of made a little bit blurry from me doing that. Focus, focus. All right, I think, I think it all came back. It looks blurry over here on my side, but maybe y'all can let me know how it looks on your end. Doing that close up kind of freaked it out a little bit. <laughs> Um, I think it's okay though. Let's see how everybody's doing on that. If you all can see visually okay on this side. Uh, it is a little bit blurry. Okay. So I'm going to check my settings here, making sure everything looks fine there. All right. Yeah, it does look a little blurry. Okay. Well, let me see what I can do. Zoom out. Uh, I'm going to do a brief refresh. So I am still here. I'm just going to switch off my camera really quickly. You can all can still hear me though and see if I turn it back on you know, like the famous turn it on and off again, if it'll reset. Hey, I think that may have worked. That may have worked. Okay, let me know in the chat if that worked or not. Uh, yes, it did work. Perfect. All right. I've watched enough IT crowd to know. Just turn it on and off again. and It'll work. So, okay, we're going to be playing Welcome to Dino World. And if you don't have a player sheet, not a problem. You'll just need a pen and paper to draw a grid that is eight by nine. So nine squares across and eight squares high. Because we are going to be drawing a dinosaur park. Um, so I'm going to, if everyone's got their player sheets and things or they're getting them all prepped up, I'm going to switch to our table view and we can get started on the teach and the run through. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, but it's good to see all of you online here. 
I'm really excited to be playing this with you all today. So here we go, friends. We have got welcome to Dino World. So this is our player sheet over here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing dinosaurs into our park. So this is our eight by nine grid that I was telling you about. Nine squares across and eight squares high. Once you have that, you're going to take the four, the squares in the middle, you're going to count over one, two, three, four from the top and count over five into the middle. So one, two, three, four, five. And from there, you're going to draw a two by two lake section. This section cannot have any dinos in it. No dinosaurs in that part of the park. So again, you're going to start from the top, top left, count down four squares, one, two, three, four, and then count five across, one, two, three, four, five. And on that number five, you're going to do a two by two square that's going to be your lake section. Okay. So I'll give you all a minute to do that. Well, I get myself a little bit bigger here on the screen. Okie doke. Can you put a magical Leopleurid on in the lake? Sure, you can. Um, it won't count for any points. It'll just be for aesthetics. But yes, go ahead. Draw your magical Leopleurid on into your lake. All right, so once you've got your lake drawn out, then you're going to go back up to the top. You're going to go from the top right this time and count three squares over one, two, three. And on that third square, you're going to write, draw a little crossroads piece. This is your one of your starting pathways, your entry into the park, if you will. So go ahead and draw. Start in the top right and count one, two, three over. And that's you're going to draw the crossroads section. And lastly, Start back over on the left side, count five down, one, two, three, four, five. And on square five, you're going to draw another crossroads piece. That is going to be your starting section, another starting entry into your park, okay? So we've got your lake in the middle. And so we've got that here. Um, there is, seems to be their numbers can be kind of hard to read, um, but I'll make sure to kind of hold it up a little bit closer for you all to see it. Um, unfortunately, I can't zoom in as, as low as I would like to on this board without cutting off some stuff. So I'm gonna have to go with these number values and things here onto your player sheet. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be rolling some dice, and we're going to be drawing things into our park and claiming any victory points after we draw. We are going to be playing eight rounds and this dice tracker right here is handy for you to do the eight rounds. And then what you're going to do is write the three dice values from each roll, from each round into these columns here. So for example, if this was our first round, we've got the two, two, three, and five. I'll put this over here so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Two, three, and five, I would draw a two, a three, and a five on my column to indicate those are the three dice values that I have for this round. Now, I can do multiple things with those dice. I could draw a, some pathways. I could take a pathway, and down here in this section are the different types of pathways that you can do. Pathways are with the value of pips that are on the die. So these, this straight piece here and this elbow piece here cost one pip. This half an H piece costs two pips and the T crossroads piece costs three pips. You can, however, exchange a four pip value to make one of the previous top sections here a pathway and change it into a crossroads piece, but that would cost you four pips. 
So it's not necessarily a value of four. It could be, you can have like a five here and you can draw a, a, a road pathway that is a value of four and a pathway that is a value of one. So that could be a way you can use the dice <clears throat> for drawing pathways. You can draw multiple pathways on one die value um, but any, any die values that are remaining that you don't use do not get rolled over to the next round, they get discarded. So there are straight pieces, elbow pieces, kind of the half H here and the crossroads for three pips, or you can exchange one of the top sections here into a crossroads. Now, why would that be necessary? Because as you're building your park in here, you will get limited in terms of what sections of the park you can actually access and pathways leading up to them. Uh, your dinosaur pens must have pathways connected to them before they can be built into your park. So you might need to manipulate some pathways first before you draw any of your dinosaur pens, okay? So that's one way you can use the dice on a round is to draw pathways. Secondly, you could do to draw one of the following dinosaur pens. Dinosaur pens are in values uh, corresponding to the number in green here. And I will use one of these. I'll kind of zoom in a little bit on actually zoom in. I mean, by actually raising the player sheet here. Oh boy, that's really, really bright. Maybe not so much. Mm, focus, focus, focus. Okay, I don't think that's going to work. I think it's just too bright. All right, well, I will just explain each of them and feel free to type in the chat if you want clarification on rules and things, it's totally fine. This top one here, this is a protoceratops. Protoceratops pens are three squares in size. Now, when you draw a dinosaur pen, they can be in any orientation as long as the three squares are, are orthogonal to each other. So if I were to draw a proceratops pen, I could draw one like this, just straight across three squares or I could do something like this and make it an L shape, okay? So as long as there's three squares incorporated into those pens, that counts. Now, in order to draw a Proceratops pen, I must spend a die value of one, two, or three. So I could spend one, two, or three and make sure that there's a pathway connected. That's what this little minus symbol is for and then it's a three square pen. And make sure you don't forget to draw your little proceratops, proto, protoceratops. I'm going to butcher these dinosaurs names. So I'm going to call him a proto <laughs> for, sake, for sake of explanation. Draw a little proto into your dinosaur pen. All right, next we have a compo signathus, compo signathus, or a compi. I'm just gonna name it, name it a compi. The compi needs a two square pen and it takes a value of two, three, or four on a J, okay? Now it also needs a pathway connecting to it. In order to draw that pen, you must have a pathway that leads to it and it needs power. So these little lightning bolt symbols indicate power generators. Power generators are down here and those take up one full square on your park. And these are free, they don't cost any die values, they're free to use. But in order to build any of these consecutive any of these dinosaurs following down on the path here, you will need to have that number of generators. Now a generator can connect to multiple dinosaur pens. 
So you could utilize one dinosaur, one generator to run multiple pens if you choose. All right, so this one just needs one. And when you draw a generator, let's say if I was gonna draw this copy, I would draw my dinosaur pen here. It's connected to a pathway. This is my little copy pen. Here he is. And a power generator, I could take this square here and draw a generator. And then I would mark off, I have used one generator. Now at the end of the game, any unused generators give you plus two points. So it is key to try to utilize them as best as possible by, by putting it somewhere next to the dinosaur pen that it needs to be generated by. It does not need to be next to a pathway. The generator just needs to be touching one of the edges of that dino pen. Okay, so that's the compi. Next, we've got Stegosaurus or Steggy. Steggy needs a three, four, or five, and it is con configured of a five square pen, and it needs one generator to power it. All right, and there's your little sketch to draw a steggy if you want a steggy. Next, we've got a velociraptor. Velociraptors need a four, five, or six die value. It's a four square pen, again, in any orientation of four squares, and it needs two power generators in order to operate it. Below is a brachiosaurus or brachy, or we'll call them brock, just call it brock. Brock needs seven or more. Now, as you can see, these are standard D6s. So how are we going to get a seven? Well, for these dinosaur pens down here, the Brocky and the T-Rex, you will need a value of seven or more. And that's where you come in and actually add two die values together to utilize that some value to make one of these dinosaur pens, okay? So I would, in this example, I would use the five and the two to make a seven if I were to draw either a Brocky pen or a T-Rex pen, okay? Brachysaurus needs two power generators to, to run it and T-Rexes need three power generators. So then there are facilities that you can draw with the die values. And the facilities are up here. And those can get you knots of victory points at the end of the game. These are drawn randomly for every game. There are several in the box itself that you will draw one of the triangle shape facilities and one of the circle shape facilities for each game. So in this example here for the roller coaster, it says it takes a value of a one, two, or three die in order to draw a triangle facility. And this triangle facility is actually going to be a roller coaster in your park because every dino park needs a roller coaster, right? Right. The details say it must connect to a path or to another roller coaster. So if I choose to use, let's say I chose this three and I wanted to draw one of the roller coasters, I would need to have it connect to a pathway. So I indicate that this is a facility. This is a triangle facility, aka a roller coaster. And it is a one square facility. All facilities take just one square on your board. From there, it says any adjacent roller coasters score one for one victory point, two for three victory points, three or more for six victory points. That's what the stars mean. So if you just have one, you will get one star or one victory point. If you have multiples in a chain connected to one another, they will, they will get you those corresponding victory points. All right, that's the roller coaster. This, the circle facility takes either a four five or six value die. And that is for the ranger lookout. And you will get one star or one victory point per pen that is in a straight line of the lookout. So let's say I had my lookout here and I've got my T-Rex pen here. Let's just say I've got my T-Rex pen here. I've got a little copy pen here 
And so I've got T-Rex, I've got my compi here, and I got myself a proto, a proto here. So line of sight means visually straight lines. So here and here. So I would get one, two, three points for this lookout because it is in line of sight of three, three pens, okay? So that's what the facilities are. Facilities do take up space onto your board. So you gotta be mindful of that when it comes to building pens and putting generators in and things like that. But they also give you victory points. So, and the number of dinosaurs you get also give you victory points at the end of the game too. So I'll explain that in just a sec. Now, the other thing, after we have claimed all of the rolls, we have combined all our dice like we need to, we've tracked them all here on our tracker, used any generators, drawn any paths or dinosaur pens or facilities, we will move on to the claiming visitors. Now, one more thing that I'm just looking at before we claim the visitors is the research center. Research allows you to manipulate a die value by plus one or minus one. You can go above a six, but you cannot go below a one. So if, if we had a six here and I wanted to draw maybe a Brocky pen, I could take this six, use one of my research actions. It is free and I could potentially create that to be a seven. So I wouldn't have to combine multiple dice. I can just take one of the dice, use it as a seven and claim it into a drawing of the Brachiosaurus pen. All right, but you only have six for the game. You can use multiple researches on one die value. That is totally fine, but once you're out, you're out. All right, so that's all the dice things. Now we're doing to claiming visitors, which is the second phase of the round. These visitors here are all of different values and there are multiples in the game and you choose you choose the number based upon the number of players. Now in the actual game, there is a competition between your neighbors when you play this. So there will be a, there will be three cards, four, five, and six value of points on the right-hand side of you and also on the left-hand side of you. And so you're going to be in direct competition with your neighbors to see who can get these bonuses, who can claim these visitor cards first because whoever does first will get those points and the others will not. So, but in this game, since we're doing this virtually, I just decided to do just a straight one, two, three, four, four six, and 10, um, so that we can just kind of understand the mechanics of what it is. But if anyone in the chat obtains any of these objectives first, they will get those victory points. If there is a tie during the same round, ties are shared. Okay, so again, this is just a little bit of a different uh, setup that we're doing for online here that we're only going to be using these three cards, but in the real game, you would actually have competition with six different cards competing with your neighbors on the left hand side and your right hand side. So let's explain what these cards do. So we've got the four is you would need to draw three or more power generators touching each other orthogonally. All right, so that's left down, up and right. Up, down, left, right. <laughs> left, down, up, right. <laughs> All right, so the first player to do that will get four victory points there. The next one is draw three or more dinosaur pens that are all touching each other orthogonally. So we've got three or more pens that are touching each other orthogonally, which means there has to be some edge that is touching each other orthogonally. So in this example, we've got a Velociraptor pen, we've got a Compi pen, and then we've got a Proto pen, and they're all three touching each other here. So the first player to do that will get six points. <clears throat> All right, then we've got facilities. If you have a, a 10 point here, you will draw five or more facilities of any type will get 10 points there. All right, <clears throat> looks like I might be a little frozen. 
Let's see, how is everyone looking there? It did kind of blip for just a second, seeing if it comes back on. Yep, it is kind of getting a little bit here. All right. <clears throat> Let me see. I am going to do some switching. Please hold folks. Let me go on here. I am going to see if I can get myself into my stream. Screen is frozen and the sound is breaking up. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to close this out. All right, close this out. Do, 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 do. See if that does any better. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. Okay, let's see if that does anything better. I was trying to view the um, I was trying to view uh, some other Twitch streamers before. Um, so I'm wondering if Twitch might be having some issues today. All right, I turned that one off. How is it looking now? Does it, does it seem any better now? I did do some um, closing of things. Closing of things possibly a little bit better. Do, 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 closing of the things. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Do, 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 do. All right. So we're going back here to the facilities section. If you didn't see how everything, um, facilities there. If you have draw five or more facilities of any type, then that'll be 10 points. All right, cool. Everything is working. Everything is working. Everything is cool when you have some time. All right, there we go. So that are your visitors. So what we're going to do is we're going to be rolling these dice. We're gonna be either drawing pathways, facilities, or dinosaur pens. And then we resolve and see if anyone has claimed any of these facilities, or sorry, any of these visitor cards, okay? So we can have any of these visitor cards. If no one has claimed visitor cards, we roll again and start the next round, facilities, are scored at the end of the game and dinosaurs are scored at the end of the game. For every proto that you have in your park, you will get three points per. Every compi will give you four points. Every steg will give you five points. Every velociraptor gives you six. Every bronte gives you seven and T-Rex will give you eight. All right, then we will score our facilities, any claimed visitors, any unused generators will give you plus two victory points. And then the miscellaneous, that's for future stuff uh, for other objectives and advanced modes and things like that. Okie doke. I am going to erase here. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, if you are still drawing and you still need some time to do that, please go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take a drink of my water here. And we will go, we will stop. Yep. 
thank you. Thank you all for your patience on here. This game can get kind of tricky, tricky. So planning out things is good. All right, so here we go. First roll of the dice. Oh boy, got some low numbers here. We've got a one, a two, and a two. So down here on your tracker, one, two, and two. So seeing as the options that we have, we could draw a proto pen. We could draw a compi pen. We could draw one of the roller coaster facilities, or we could draw some pathways. I have learned by playing this game enough that drawing pathways is always a good thing to do. <laughs> it is always a good thing to do. Yet with drawing pathways, you can get yourself stuck in a corner. So what I am going to do is going to take one of these twos and I'm going to draw, I'm gonna draw a proto pen. So I'm gonna utilize one of these twos and I'm gonna draw a proto pen, which costs three. And I'm gonna draw like this. This is my proto pen here. Now, pathways must connect to previous drawn pathways. If I did not mention that, I will mention that now because you cannot walk through a pathway through a already um, dino pen or anything like that. So a pathway will end. So this pathway here in this entry is actually going to end here at this proto pen. So I will need to continue to draw some pathways elsewhere in order to connect to other facilities and dino pens and et cetera, et cetera. So I've got, I like to draw my little P here and we've got our proto, proto here. Then I'm going to draw some pathways. This pathway seems really nice to do because it extends, but it can point to in multiple directions. And I believe you can rotate them. You can you can draw a straight line, a corner piece, or a T junction in any orientation, but you cannot draw into the lake. A question, can I change the orientation of the pathway? Yes, you can. So for this T piece, so I'm gonna draw one of these T pieces using my two here. I'm gonna actually draw the T piece like this. Okay. So any of these three can be rotated but you cannot draw anything in the lake. I mean, you can draw your magical Leopluridon if you want to in your lake. All right. And then for my final move, I am going to draw, I think I'm going to draw, let's see if I can get maybe a lookout. Now for the facilities, Facilities do not have to be connected to pathways unless they're indicated on the card. So in this example for the roller coaster, they do have to be connected to a pathway or they can be connected to a previous roller coaster. But the lookout does not need to be connected to a pathway. It just needs to be in a direct line of sight. All right. So for my one, um, let's see, I want to draw another pathway. Uh, 
so any power generators touching, dyno pens touching, and facilities of any type. Okay. So with this one, I'm going to draw a roller coaster, I think. Yeah. I'm going to put the roller coaster here with my one. All right. And that's that round there, too. OK. Anyone doing all right on that? Let's roll them up and continue on to the next round. All right, we've got a one, a two, and a six. So drawing on our dice tracker here, one, two, and six. Sixes are good if we want to make a T-Rex pen. Oh, I'm gonna get, I like having T-Rex pens in my park, but I also like having Brockies in my park too. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my research with this six here and draw and draw T-Rex. And I'm gonna do here It's kind of a weird shape, but it works. You got a big old head. Rawr. Tiny little arms, big head. And it needs power generators. So I'm going to do power generator here. No, not there. I'm going to draw power. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe I will do that. Yeah. Power generator here. Power generator here. And a power generator here. So I did one, two, three, because a T Rex needs three power generators. And unfortunately, I did not get that taken care of because this power generator in the corner would not have touched the T-Rex pen. So I had to draw it over on the side. So that was my six. Now I've got a two and a one here. So, I am going to draw a roller coaster with my two. I'm going to do this here. And then I'll do that there. It'll just be a chain of roller coasters. Ha, to make those a little bit bigger. There you go. All right, so that's my one, two, and six there. Now we check to make sure three power, three power rangers, three power rangers, three power generators touching orthogonally. I don't have that yet. Uh, three or more dino pens touching each other orthogonally. I don't, I only have two. 
Um, and then five or more facilities mixed of any types. And I don't have that yet. I only have three. All right, so that's round two. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. If you're just lurking, thanks for lurking. We've got a two, three, and a four here for this next round. Two, three, and four. So now I gotta look at what can I do? Three power, power generators. I'm, I swear I'm gonna keep saying Power Rangers. <laughs> I need to draw some more pathways here, folks, because I'm getting a little bit close here. So I need to extend that out. So I'm actually Yeah, it's kind of sounds silly, but I'm going to do three. I'm going to take my three and draw some straight lines here. So we've got a one, two, and a three pathway. So now I have access over here to do some stuff. Uh, now, drawing some, maybe some facilities, see if I can get at a line of sight here. I could try to draw I can't draw anything yet over here because I don't have any pathways here. And I can only draw things over here and on this side. So oh, I could do this and combine, take one of my research, again, change that two into a three, combine the four and the two together to make a seven. And I could do, ooh, okay. I could do a Brachiosaurus pen but it needs, that needs this. All right, I'm gonna do a T-Rex again, going on this way here. This is a T-Rex. Here he is, big old head, tiny little body, big old head, tiny little body. And it needs three generators. So I'm going to do one, two, and three. One, two, and three. So I would claim this victory point. Hello, Eclectic Camel. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Commando, we are playing a uh, Dino World. Welcome to Dino World. Um, you are welcome to join us or just lurk. Uh, it's a fairly, fairly fun, fairly straightforward game. Drawing some stuff, but a lot of tough decisions. Um, you've got the three Dino pens, Yak Manda. All right, cool. So that is six points for you. I'll just slide that down there. And I've got myself the four power generators, the four power rangers touching. 
Uh, so that will give me four points at the end of the game. So these two are already claimed. If you have that one as well, Yakmanda, you can also claim this one as well. I don't have this one, so you have that one. Washing dishes, but I'll watch and learn. Sounds good. Do you write that in the bonus? Yes, you will be writing that in the uh, claimed visitors section down here at the bottom. Um, and so that will be six points for you. Currently I have four, so I will just put the four in here tentatively. If either one of us gets this one, then we will just add that to that bonus there. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I use this here and here. Now we've got, we've got that one all finished and I need to get some more pathways. So we are drawing some pathways and some dino pens and some facilities to bring people into our parks. What we do in order to draw our, draw our things is take these three die values and do multiple things with them. We can either draw pathways, which is down here at the bottom, Pathways are corresponding to the number of pips that you can see on here on the score sheet. Uh, a straight line or an L shaped piece is a one pip value. The half an H piece is a two pip value or a crossroads is a three pip value. And at any time throughout the game, you can exchange one of those values of pathways that you already drew onto your park for four pips and create a crossroads instead. Uh, and I can combine dice values. Yes, you can. So you can combine all of these. So if you wanted to create a seven Yakmanda, you can combine all of these die values to create a seven. That is totally legit. Um, you can also use the research down here to manipulate one die value, either uh, plus one or minus one, which means you can make things above a six, but you cannot go below a one. You can use multiple research on one die or spread them out over multiple dice if you choose. Uh, you can also write facilities. Those cost the die values one, two, and three for a triangle facility, which are roller coasters in this game, or exchange a four, five, or six value to draw a circle facility, which is a ranger lookout, and they'll give you points at the end of the game. You can also combine these die values in order to achieve one of the facility values as well, too. Um, that is always an option. Or you can draw a dino park combining those die values and draw the corresponding generators if they need generators. And the squares in green indicate how large the pen is for that dino. And any generators that you do not use at the end of the game give you plus two victory points. So, okay, we've got a one, two, and four here. I need a I need to get some facilities. Um, okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to draw a uh I've got three facilities so far. So can I get another facility? So if I drew a lookout, if I took my four and let's say I drew my lookout here, right? Currently the line of sight is two because it can see two. And it has potential to see things on this side as well. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna use that for one of my facilities and that's four facilities I've got right now. And it doesn't have to be connected to a pathway, which is nice. And then I can't draw any dino pens yet over here because I don't have any pathways connected to it. That is one caveat for drawing dino pens is that you must have pathways connected to them. Um, so I'm going to need to draw some pathways, folks. Uh, 
So I'm going to use my value one here and go douche and draw that there. And then I'm going to use one of my research to make my two into a three so I can draw a crossroads like that. So that utilizes my two. So I can, so now I have access up here on pathways over here and down in this area as well. Now we see if anybody has claimed anything. If you have five or more facilities, that's going to be the 10 points there. If not, we will go ahead and roll them up. For the last visitor card, do those facilities have to be touching or five or more total? Oh, okay. says five or more facilities of any type. Let me see if I can move it up just a skosh here if you can see that better. I'll move the dice over here. So yeah, it says five or more facilities of any type. I believe that means that they can be anywhere on your park. Let me double check that one. The visitor cards, visitor cards. Visitor cards, claiming a visitor card. Okay. <clears throat> Research. Do, 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 I think it's just anywhere, a mix of anywhere in your park. I don't believe they have to be touching. I think it's just anywhere in your park. Yeah. So if you claimed that one, aka let me know, Yakmanda, let me know. Um, then we can do that one. Uh, we can mark that one as completed as well. No, not yet, just checking. Okie doke. Yes, so I would say it would be um, anywhere in your park, you can do that one. All right, moving on. Hmm. All right, got some big numbers here, six, six and three. Now I need to get some, oh, I can draw. This is gonna be really nice. I can fit a Brachiosaurus pen in this area here because it would be touching enough generators for it to work. So I'm going to take one of my sixes, use a research, and draw my Brocky pen. So this is B for Brachiosaurus. What does a Brachiosaurus look like? It's got a long neck. A long neck. Hello, Brachiosaurus. I'm glad this is not a judgment of people's artistic abilities in this game because it's it's pretty ridiculous how well or how not so well that I draw. I mean, it looked like an earthworm with arms now, to be honest. <laughs> I just really just drew an earthworm with arms. Um, but it is touching two, one, two, three actual um, generators. So it is okie, okie doke on that side. Now I've got another six and a three. I could I could draw another Brachiosaurus if I wanted to. Hmm. 
We're just judging in silence. Yeah, it's a wormosaurus. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Silent judgment, I'm totally fine with. Um, yeah, as long as it's not in the chat. This is family friendly chat. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeepers. Okay, so, oh, I have not marked enough. I apologize, folks. I should have been marking off my generators that I've used on here. So I've got six that I used. Make sure you do that. If you're drawing your generators, make sure you do that. Um, I need some pathways. So uh, and some more facilities if I'm going to get any sort of bonuses here. One per pen per lookout. So I could draw I could draw a copy if I wanted. I could draw a proto if I wanted. See, because if I get myself stuck, I won't be able to kind of utilize getting on in this area unless I decide to draw some more pathways, which might not be a terrible idea if I'm honest. Um, let's see, just to clarify, oh, you like, you like my job, my drawings very much. Thank you, Gus and I appreciate that. Just for clarifying, I could use a six die to make six straight paths. Yes, you can, because it only takes a one pip, so you can draw six of anything, or sorry, six one pip values, not six of anything, six one pip values. Okay, it seems like I would need to draw, I need to connect some more stuff here. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw myself a proto. No, maybe I'll draw, cause I need, because I need, oh, I could draw a staggy. One, two, three, four, five. I could draw a staggy. And it only costs one generator. And then if I did an L, let's see if I did an L shape. L shape would be two pips. Okay. So, and I can have a three here. So I'm gonna take that three die and I'm gonna draw an L shape for one pip. Gadoosh, gadoosh. And then for my two pip, I'm gonna draw a T shape pathway like this. So now with my remaining six, I can draw a steggy or a Velociraptor, ooh. Mm. Oh, I can't draw a Steggy unless I use the research to go down in value. But if I did a, okay. No, so sorry. This is this is where it gets complicated. <laughs> Getting steggy with it, yes. So actually, I'm not gonna draw steggy, but I am gonna draw my T this way, like this, my T piece this way, because since it's a six value, I don't want to use some of my last research to make this last six into a five. So I'm not gonna do a Steggy, unfortunately. I'm gonna do a Velociraptor with my six. I'm gonna draw a four square like this. This is my Velociraptor, it's V. He's very tiny. I'm gonna make him so tiny. You can't even tell what he is. And it needs another generator. So I'm going to draw a generator 
right here, <laughs> which got me that four eventually. But yeah, that utilizes my last six there. So I've got a pathway to go somewhere around here. I've also got a pathway down here. And now my outlook, my lookout post is in a good line of sight here. So I will get some points that way. I might draw another one as well. Oh, you've got the five facilities. Cool. Okay, so that's 10 points for you, Yakmanda. Go ahead and add that to your claimed visitors section here on your bonus. And we are getting close, folks. Get a home stretch, home stretch. All right, two, couple two, uh, one, two, and a couple threes. One, two, and a couple threes. So two, three, and three. Okay. Well, I know I want to do a ranger station because I want to get those. Well, I don't necessarily have to because right now, well, I only have one, I only get two points, three points for that one. So if I can get more dino pens in line of sight with it, then I could get more points in that way. So I'm going to need to utilize some pathways here to connect over on this side. And also, I think I can fit one more dino pen here. And then I'm going to have to draw some pathways so I can do another dino pen here. Yeah. OK. So what do we got? Could do four, five, and six. Jeepers. All right. Sorry, folks, I am not rolling super great today. Um, I could do some compies. I could do a proto. and get myself another crossroads. Yeah. All right, so I am gonna take this two I'm going to draw a compi with the generator. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, again, I'm glad I'm counting. So that's a compi. Compi's kind of tiny, too. All of these are looking like just earthworms with legs. This one looks like a wrench, like a monkey wrench. That one actually looks more like a beetle. And I don't even know, like a sock puppet. I don't even know what's going on with that one. Okay, so I've got power connected to it. Compi is there. Um, with my three, I could do a proto. I could do the proto here, so I could make my three, my proto. I'm so glad you're not judged on like passing your paper to someone else and knowing what, what you actually drew, because this is kind of a nightmare. All right, now I am going to take my last three. I'm going to do an L like this one, two,
no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do a T piece. So I'm gonna do a T. No, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, so that's a one. Uh, geez. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm going to do a straight and then an L like this. Stretch it out. Yeah, see what happens. Okay. So funny doing this live because my strategy is non existent, but I am having fun drawing these obnoxious little dinosaurs dinosaurs so we've got a one and one and a four so we've got all of these visitor cards claimed we still got time to do some of these up here a one and one and a four is not great jess not great at all oh geez These are so low, goodness gracious. Okay, I think I am going to use, combine all of these to make a seven because I think I want another Brachiosaurus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I put the generator here, it needs two. It needs two generators. Okay, so I can do Ah, I could do like this, right? I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this. It's kind of an odd shape. No, that doesn't seem to be utilizing my space very well. Okay, let's rethink. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. So this is kind of wasted space here. So if I touch one of these to put a generator in, I need somewhere else to put another generator. Or I could do a T-Rex. <clears throat> yeah, maybe if I did a generator here and for my T-Rex pen, going to be a nice little ziggy zag. And then or Do I draw, do I draw it? So I've got my pathway here. If I use that generator there.
Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it seems to be kind of kind of the way it's going to be, I think. Yeah, so I'll do this here. This will be my T-Rex, T-Rex heavy park. Rawr, it's got a big mouth, Rawr. little tiny arms. And then it's got one, two, three. Yep, and combine that, one, two, three, used, I think I used that there, so I have one. So yeah, I kinda, I kinda put myself in a predicament there, but second to last round, I think I'm just gonna be drawing facilities, see if I can. Okie doke. So here we go, last round. bigger numbers that's kind of nice five five and two for this final round five five and a two okay so yeah i'm just gonna And what, if I didn't say this already, once you draw something and it's the next round, you can't go back and erase it. But during the round, you can. You can manipulate pathways and draw out your pens the way you want to. But once it's written down and you move on to the next round, it's done. So unfortunately, I'm going to Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to see what I get for these. Use those and the two can't really do anything with because I have no pathways to connect anywhere over here. And yeah, I think that's all. Can I use two research at once? Yes, you can. as many as you need in order to get the desired value you want. Okie doke, I'll give you all just a little extra minute. I didn't have that many dinosaurs in my park as I thought I would, but we'll see, we'll see how a score. We'll see how we score. So I have got one, two protos. So I've got two protos here, compies. I've got just the one, just the one compy. I gave up on my steg, so no steggies for me. I've got one velociraptor. I've got one bronte and three T-Rexes. So yeah, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dinosaurs. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Okie doke. Now I'm gonna multiply. So three points per for the protos. I got six there. Four points per for the compies. Nothing for the stags, six points per Velociraptor, seven points per Bronte, and eight points for the T-Rex. So add that up, 34, and 13 is 47, I think, 10, 16, 23, 43, 47, yep. Okay, facilities. 
connecting to a path or into another roller coaster. Adjacent roller coasters score one for one, two for three, or three or more for six. I only have three here, so I only get six points for that. And then for this, so I've got six points for that. And then for my circle facilities, one point per pen and straight line of view of the lookout. Now, I believe it's just, you can, mul you can do multiple scoring for each direction of the lookout. Ranger lookout. Each ranger lookout is worth a number of victory points equal to the number of different dinosaur pens that are overlooked at the ranger lookout. Consider horizontal vertical lines of squares extending out from the ranger lookout to the edges of your park, counting the number of different dino pens that intersect with these two lines of squares. Okay, so in this example here, so for this one, I would score one, two, three, four, five for this one. And I think that might be the same, let's see, five, one, two, three, four, five. And this one is one, two, three, four. So I got five, five, and four. So that's 14 plus six is 20 for that. So on the Ranger Lookout, you're going to go based on the horizontal, the horizontal line, the number of different dinosaur pens, and then also the vertical line. So in this one, I had two up here and then three across. So that's five for this lookout. This one, I also had two and then this three because it touches the T-Rex one and not the Velociraptor. So that's one, two, three as well. But then this bottom one has the two up top, but then only the Proto and the T-Rex, not the Compi, because the Compi is up here. So that's 20 for that one. Any unused generators, you get plus two. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I used 11 out of the 12, so I only get two. So if you did not use all of them, give yourself positive two points for that. Your claimed visitors, I know AKA Amanda got these two here, uh, 10 and six, so 16, I only just got the four. So that would be in the claimed visitors section. And then finally the MISC, and then any bonuses, that's, we just add all together. So 26 on my bonus total. Grand total 26 plus 47 is 73. This is my grand total there. All right. Sorry, I kind of like shifted these over. Research, I don't believe you get any bonuses for not using research. Uh, let's see. Yes, so there's no benefit for any leftover research. So 98, very nice, very nice, Yakmanda. Yeah, I got 73. I did not, I should have built some steggies. It would have given me a better option there. Uh, someone may need to check my sheet. Okay, yeah. You can screen share it and send it to me if you want. Um, yeah, so that's, that is welcome to Dino World. And like I said, there are different uh, facility cards that you can use that for to mix it up and different visitor cards that you can use there. We played on the light mode. I don't know if you saw, but on the light mode, there's also a danger mode and danger mode has a few more things to be aware of. Um, you can actually increase threat on your park. There's an increase of threat level on your park and certain power generators could go out if you reach a certain amount of threat because uh, your dinos can escape and cause terror and wreak havoc. There's also some research cards here too, just an extra, you know, some of your facilities uh, might, the generators might malfunction. So that's how the dinosaurs can get out. 
Um, but it's it's kind of crazy. I thought you know it was a good introduction to do the light mode first, so that everybody can kind of see uh, what to do on these. I like this game. It has a little more a complexity to it than originally meets the eye. You know, the welcome to Dino World. You're like, oh, I'm just drawing. I'm just going to draw some dinosaurs in a pen and, you know, put some generators out. But it actually can get quite complex because you forget that you have to have a pathway to a dinosaur pen in order to reach it. Because that makes sense, right? If you're actually in some sort of amusement park or a zoo or something like that, you need to have some way to get to there. You can't walk through the pen. <laughs> So uh, will Chris Pratt come save us? I don't know, perhaps. Maybe he should play this game and he can have some more, um, more knowledge and more logic on how to get through it. So we, we shall see. All right, I'm gonna stop screen share and go up top here. Uh, thanks again for all of you for joining me and playing or just lurking. Uh, I do wanna mention that this Friday, I'm going to be playing Second Chance here on the Twitch stream, also at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is 2300 UTC. Uh, you are welcome to join me on that. I'm going to be doing that for um, Oricon, which is a sci-fi convention here in Oregon, but they are doing it virtually. And I got to participate uh, with an organization called the Creation Station, which highlights a lot of people's um, artistic abilities and connectivity through art and music and games. And so I'm going to be leading a couple games of Second Chance. So if you want to join me here on Twitch, I will be doing that this Friday at four o'clock. Otherwise, I will see you all next time for another happy hour hangout. Stay safe. Uh, please make sure to wear a mask, bundle up if you can, enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and I appreciate you all with your patience in trying to help me get all the audio and the video things sorted out. I apologize for the little glitchiness that was happening with the um, internet. I think Twitch was having a little bit of an issue here today, but you are all being awesome and have done so much for me to uh, want me to continue to do this. So I want to just say thanks to you all for that. So once again, I will see you all next time here on Happy Hour Hangout. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, whatever time zone you are in and uh, have fun gaming. <laughs>